recorded. Good morning. My name is Zain and I'm the General Manager of Technology and Innovation and Acquire. Welcome. Today I'm going to talk to you guys about the CTV and landscape in New Zealand and how it's evolved. The reason I'm going to talk about CTV is because it's one of the fastest growing mediums globally. And I think it's important to understand the opportunities available, the targeting options, as well as the best practices involved when you're buying CTV inventory. Before we deep dive into the nitty gritty of CTV media buying, let's focus on OTT and CTV and what they mean. CTV means connected TV, and it refers to a specific type of device, whereas OTT means over-the-top streaming video and refers to content. Use CTV when you are specifically talking about smart TVs and streaming devices that are attached to the TVs. So when you're talking connected TV, think Roku TV, Apple TV, the PlayStation, your Xbox, or your smart TV itself. Use OTT when you refer to content. And it doesn't matter what devices they include. For example, Netflix, Hulu, TVNZ, MediaWorks. SWOT and AWOT are terms you come across when you're buying CTV inventory. SWOT means subscription video on demand, and AWOT is ad supported video on demand. The subscription video on demand is your Netflix and Prime video where you're paying for a service to watch premium content. Whereas your ad supported video on demand is uh, a, a players like Hulu in America that discount your subscription if you're willing to watch ads. And then there's your free ad supported video on demand like Tubi TV, TVNZ, MediaWorks, where you're still getting to watch premium content, but you've got to watch ads. CTV is growing globally, and in America, it's, it's, it's estimated to hit 14.12 billion by 2023, and it's going to account for 7% of the total digital ad spending. UG by far is the biggest recipient of TV ad spending, followed by Roku and Hulu in America. Closer to New Zealand, IB Australia, the IB Australia states that 45% of all Australians age 14 plus have access to internet content via TV and 30% are doing so daily. That's 6 million Australians accessing internet content via the TV daily. What are they watching online? Some of them are watching subscription video on demand, free to air, pay-per-view, and some of them are just internet browsing on their television. So what's happening in New Zealand? Based on a study by Think TV last year, our connected TV devices are growing. I think it's at 4% now. Our average New Zealand homes have almost eight screens. And this, this is uh, your smartphones, your tablets, your TVs, your desktops, and your laptops. So it is increasing. So, so what we did was we, we used an inventory availability report on DV360 to see what regions in New Zealand have higher connected TV reach. Auckland, Canterbury, Wellington, and Waikato were the leaders. Now that we know about connected TV, let's look at the channels we can buy connected TV on. TVNZ and MediaWorks are, are by far the largest uh, supply of connected TV in New Zealand. And you can see by this, uh, by this graph, that connected TV during during the lockdown peaked. MediaWorks, 33% of three now users are now watching connected TV. You see a, a peak last year in 2019, a big, a big bell curve, and that's probably Love Island or a popular show. And you can see how 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 the streams increase seasonally across different channels. Our friends at Telaria now Magnite. I've sort of given us a trend across uh, viewing habits on the Tulare Exchange in New Zealand. And you can see peaks similar to uh, primetime TV watching, which is from six to 10. And they've broken it down by connected TV, gaming consoles, and set-top boxes. 
CTV in New Zealand can be bought on various exchanges and on various formats. The most popular format is being a video and the exchange that supports them is still ARIA, now Magni. And it's primarily due to their partnership with TVNZ and MediaWorks that has a majority of CTV supply in New Zealand, followed by Pubmatic, DoubleClick, Rubicon, AppNexus, and so on. You can also buy display ads, native ads, and audio ads on, on your connected TV. And I'll talk about it a little later in the slides. Now that we know our reach, uh, and now that we know the supply that we have, let's talk about targeting. Connected TV targeting is very similar to your display or your video targeting. You can target by demographics, your age, gender. You can target by location. You can target by behavior and interest as well as contextual and content verticals. You can target by a particular show if you'd like. You can use your first and third party data as well. You can also get innovative with your ad targeting. TVNZ was the first company globally to launch uh, TV ad on pause, followed by MediaWorks a couple of months ago. It's pretty simple. You get a JPEG or a PNG uh, 1280 by 720 ad size. You can either buy it via programmatic PG, via TV360, or through a direct IO. There's a few details here in terms of, uh, of the metrics you can target, like time in view, impressions, and reach. You can target by TV shows, time of day, device, geo. You can use, you can frequency cap it. It's a highly viewable ad on your TV screen. Hulu in America has some interesting stats. They say 80% of the people that use the Hulu TV ad and pause, normally pause the ad because they've got to go to the bathroom, they've got to get a drink, or they've got to attend a phone call. So imagine if you're a, a toilet brand and you buy one of these ads when someone's pausing it. It could work, I think. Oh, sorry, I meant toilet roll brand. Sorry for that. Other CTV ad targeting opportunities, uh, you, could, you could buy audio. If, you, if you're buying CTV on YouTube, you could reach 25.9% of the New Zealand YouTube population. This is based on the YouTube planner. TVNZ have launched dynamic ad insertions, which means you can, you can dynamically insert an ad during a live news feed. Samsung TV ads have not yet reached New Zealand, but they are forecasted to come in Q4, and these are buying Samsung ads, uh, these are buying video ads on a Samsung television, and they will be released and they will be made available by an SSP called SpotX. Here's a few reasons to incorporate CTV in your next campaign. You get reach and awareness, you can, you can mimic your traditional or linear TV ads. You can capture and keep a viewer's attention. Most CTV ads are non-skippable, which means that if the user wants to watch that premium content, they have to watch your ad. A bit of the post view. The value you get is 100% viewability. Get some good engagement rates. Please note you can't click a CTV ad, but engagement rates could be, uh, you know, someone visiting your site after they've seen the ad on television. Targeting, you get. Like I mentioned in my previous slides, you get granular targeting. You can reach the right audience. I thought I'll, I'll geek out a bit and show you a, a sample bid request, uh, courtesy of our friend at Sportex Australia. And um, this is uh, this is what a bid request looks like. I, I highlighted device type three. Device type three is basically uh, relates to an IAB Open RTB specification document that 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 numbers device by, that that labels devices by number. So three refers to a device type uh, connected TV. But uh, what I also wanted to show you guys is that the, the granularity we get from a bid request. We know the country, the city. Now, in this case, this user uh, was in Palmerston North. Uh, that's the, the Latin longitude of that, of that TV. Uh, we know that that user is on a Sony Bravia. And, uh, and they are watching TV TV. So we can get very granular with the targeting and we can understand our audience. Some best practices, uh, CTV is a cookie environment 
And any cookie-based audience strategies will struggle to deliver. You need to keep that in mind, especially for your remarketing. CTV environments will only accept vast creatives. By nature of the environment, CTV delivers 100% in view, and you probably get a 90 to 100% completion rates because you can't really skip the ad. You've got to watch it, especially on TVNZ and MediaWorks. Brand safety, um, not so much in the CTV space, uh, but in Jan 2020, our friends at White Ops uh, had an operation called Ice Bucket. I won't talk too much about it, but Double Verify and Spotex have now developed a CTV standalone solution that monitors uh, CTV bot, uh, bot traffic. In New Zealand, it's pretty safe to say that uh, our major supply sources, which is TVNZ and MediaWorks, have SSAI enabled, which is server-side ad insertion, and the fraud on SSAI is, is very low. Future roadmaps, there's industry bodies globally that are trying to standardize our measurements in the CDV space, so watch out. CTV publishers in New Zealand, uh, TVNZ, MediaWorks, and YouTube are the biggest, but there's also a few others like Yap TV, Crunchyroll, Plex, Anime Lab, and Bloomberg. And that's about it, guys. I hope uh, I, ho I hope this uh, this was helpful. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me at zainaracquiance.com. Have a good rest of the day and a great week. Cheers.